everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Kathy Witt from Holy Cross Health. So nice to have you join me today. This is for our diabetes prevention program. We're celebrating National Diabetes Prevention Month. Today, I'm going to make a pumpkin chili recipe in honor of the season. So I'm going to use, I'm doing a vegetarian version today, or even really a vegan version. I'm using beef crumbles. So I, you can get this Publix, Whole Foods. And what's nice about chili is you can really do it any way you want. We have a recipe that I'm following today that we're gonna share with you. And you can use any kind of protein that you want. You can use beef crumbles, you could just use beans, you could use turkey. It's really nice, a tur uh, pumpkin chili with turkey. You could use a lean ground beef, you could use ground chicken, but you can really do it any way you want. So first, I'm gonna go over the ingredient list with you. So I have olive oil just to put in the pan so the, um, the shallot doesn't stick. Today we're using shallot. If you've never used shallot, it's a little tiny onion. Of course, pumpkin. And I have some black beans, but again, if you like pinto beans or white beans, you can use any bean you want. I'm gonna be adding fire roasted tomato, some vegetable broth. If the recipe calls for beef broth, but since I'm doing a vegan recipe, I chose vegetable. And then I already chopped up the shallot, but while this is simmering, I will show you how I chopped it up. I have a tablespoon of ground cumin, three tablespoons of the chili powder, again, any chili powder you like. And I did a teaspoon of pepper, I think it's about a half a teaspoon of pepper and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I just put the two of those together. All right, so I already put the olive oil in the pan. And I like to take a paper towel and just kind of swirl it around. That way you use less. The idea is to have enough to cover the bottom of the pan. So if you use the paper towel, then it's, it's all around the pan and hopefully you will stick. And when you are, I have a gas stove. I don't know if you can see, but not very common today. I've had it my whole adult life. I don't know if I could cook on electric. So you want to use a medium flame because if you turn it up high, then you're just going to burn everything. They'll stick to your pan and you're not going to be happy. All right, so I take a few minutes to brown the shallot. I'll try to show you so you can see what's going on. I just kind of it around a little bit. It doesn't take very long to brown it and if you undercook it it's going to simmer with the meat that you choose so you don't have to worry about that. Now this is frozen so you're, you don't defrost this. You, you cook it frozen. So again have this in your freezer. It's a quick meal. If you, you're coming home from work and you don't know what you're going to make for dinner it's a, it's a, nice, it's a nice quick meal. So this is a, a pretty big recipe. It's making eight servings. So it freezes well. You need to use it out. If you're gonna keep it in a refrigerator, an airtight container, three days, three or four days, use it up. Or of course you can freeze it. So just let this simmer about five minutes. So while that's simmering, I'm going to show you how I cut the shallot. So I just cut off the ends. All these ingredients out of my way. And the uh, reason why I have this stack like this, I normally don't cut like this, but I wanted you all to be able to see it. So I just cut off the ends, and I'm probably going to end up throwing this extra in because um, I don't want to put it in my fridge. So 
I cut off the ends and then I I peel this about one layer off. Can you see? One layer off. And then it comes out. And this is a this is more of a round shallot. I've actually never seen a round shallot. They're usually more oval. So it's even easier to cut if you find these in the store. I get my groceries delivered and this is what showed up. So I was kind of happy about that. And then I just cut it in half and I'm gonna make three little lines. So now I have three sections. And then it gives me a nice dice little shallot that I will just throw in here to simmer with the rest of the crumbles. And then another thing that's nice about the beef crumbles, obviously if it's a raw product like raw ground beef or turkey, you want to brown it. You want to make sure it's all brown. With the beef crumbles, I can start adding the tomatoes and the beans and all the spices before it's it's defrosted and fully brown because it's it's already cooked. You could cook, you could brown your meat ahead of time and put it in the freezer freezer or the fridge, and then just take it out and do the same process. Just make sure it's cooked well if it's a raw meat. I am ready to start adding some spices. So again, I have it on medium and I'll just give you a look at that. All right, so I'll throw in my salt and pepper. See, it's nice if you set it up ahead of time. It's a little bit faster, but of course that's a little bit of work too. If you have time on your hands, it's nice to have it all set, the cumin. Give it a stir with each spice so it gets well coated. And then the chili powder. You can see, give a plug for Trader Joe's, I, I use everybody. Trader Joe's, Publix, Whole Foods. All right, and a Trader Joe's pumpkin. Or actually, 365 is Whole Foods. All right, I'm gonna add the pumpkin. No specific order. And if you do want to add, you can add peppers. Like a red pepper is nice to add for the color. You could change your beans. Today I'm using black beans. The recipe calls for black beans. I, uh, my family really likes pinto beans in the chili. If you're trying to um, cut back on your carbs, you can leave the beans out. And then I have some fire roasted tomatoes. Starting to sound good. I'm getting a good sizzle going. Mix this all in, and then lastly, I'm going to add the broth. And one thing I always forget to do when I'm using like a vegetable broth, you have to shake it. <laughs> I forget, <laughs> so then all the good stuff ends up staying in the box. So one cup of vegetable broth, or if you're not doing vegetarian, you could use beef. You could probably even get away with using a chicken. But the vegetable broth is a dark color, like the beef broth. The beef broth tends to be a bit darker. Now I will let this sit sit for 30, 40 minutes. I mean, it would be ready sooner, but it's nice to let it sit for a while and let the flavors really 
commingle. So let me show you what that looks like. And if you were, you could also serve this with rice or even like spaghetti squash or sweet potato. So there is your pumpkin chili. Enjoy. Thank you so much for joining or for watching. And if you have any questions, you can check out our Facebook page or you can um, email me at Kathy with a C, Kathy Witt, C-A-T-H-Y Witt, W-H-I-T-T, the number one at gmail.com. Enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs>